Let's build Arbitrum together. Let's go. So Arbitrum is about to airdrop a billion dollars plus worth of liquidity into the crypto space. And I'm pretty much guessing a lot of people are gonna wanna bridge that from Arbitrum away. So in this video, gonna go over some of the top bridges to use, three of my favorites here, and also why you maybe want to avoid using the official Arbitrum bridge. If you enjoy the content today, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and drop me a comment down below. So the airdrops are coming this Thursday, depending on when you're watching this, of course. But here on DeFi Llama, we can see the various bridging protocols. Now, essentially what you wanna do when you're looking for a bridge, you want one with a lot of TVL. That means there's plenty of liquidity. You're not gonna get hit with any slippage issues. But here on DeFi Llama, just go to the Arbitrum tab and you can see the favored bridges here. And the ones with decent liquidity are Synapse and Multichain. Celebridge has a bit as well. But below that, there's nothing really much going on. Now, one that's not actually in here, but is quite good, is also the Stargate bridge as well. So we're gonna go over three Synapse, Multichain, and Stargate. Now I did mention that the official Arbitrum bridge, which is bridge.arbitrum.io, the one you can see on screen here, is one to avoid. So this only allows you to actually move ETH from mainnet to Arbitrum or vice versa. And the problem with this is when you wanna take your Arbitrum ETH and return it to ETH mainnet, the mothership, it takes seven to eight days to do so, as this is an optimistic rollup. And that is one of the issues with optimistic rollups. It takes around seven days for the transactions to be validated back on mainnet. So if I was to plug in some RB ETH and I wanted to send this back to mainnet, you can see here you're moving this amount, you'll pay this in fees. Here's the gas cost on both the layer one environment, ETH mainnet and layer two Arbitrum. But then if you press move funds to mainnet, as you can see from this, it says on the pop-up, use a third party bridge. So it wants you to do that because you can get the funds in roughly 30 minutes by doing this. But if you use Arbitrum's bridge, here you can see, get your funds in approximately eight days and pay a small fee twice. And it even wants you to add it to your Google Calendar there. So that's obviously not great. In an industry where everything changes on almost an hourly basis, you can't be waiting eight days. So we have to go and use alternative bridges. So let's quickly run through Synapse, Multichain, and Stargate. Of course, all bridges are not made equally and all bridges are not safe either. We've seen many bridge hacks. So you are taking some form of risk by bridging funds in general, just so you know that, but these are the three best in my mind. Now, first and foremost, we have Synapse here. I've put this as number one due to the fact it has the most destination chains. So from Arbitrum, say we've converted our RB airdrop into some USDT here, and we wanna move it to another destination chain. There's 17 in total for you to choose from. So if you're an absolute degen, and maybe you wanna go and spend all your funds on somewhere like Kanto or Doge Chain, something like that, you can do that utilizing Synapse Bridge. So that's pretty good for Synapse. And the other thing to mention when utilizing the Synapse Bridge as well, really nice UI, as you can see on screen here, there is the possibility to do some swaps on here directly as well but it does give you gas on the destination chain also. So for example, I'll show you in just a second, but if we bridge our USDT from Arbitrum to another chain, it will give us a bit of gas on that chain so we can at least approve the token and make a swap, i.e. to get more of the native gas token. So you wouldn't leave yourself up shit's Creek. Then we have multi-chain here. I suggest this is the one with the most lindiness, being around the longest, typically has the highest TVL of all bridges. And so many would say this is the most safest bet. And I think if you're bridging huge amounts of funds, this is the place to do it as it has the deepest liquidity. So as you can see from this, what we're plugging in here is Synapse, a thousand bucks USDT from Arbitrum to ETH. And then the same on multi-chain and Stargate. A thousand bucks from Synapse to ETH mainnet gets you $971 on the home chain. A thousand bucks on multi-chain from Arbitrum to the mothership Ethereum, 990. So that is somewhat better. And then Stargate here, RBUSDT to USDT on ETH, a thousand bucks in, you'll receive $998. So this is actually the best by quite a few bucks there. We have almost $30 slippage, 
$10 slippage and then just around $1.22. Now Stargate wasn't in the original DeFi Llama lists, but it is one to really consider using. I have used this previously myself and will continue to use this one as this one is built on Layer Zero's technology. Layer Zero is bringing out the token. So if you're into your airdrops, there's a potentiality for a Layer Zero airdrop if you interact with this chain and do swaps on Stargate Finance. I would also probably stake some STG tokens, maybe just a small amount as well, to try and get that airdrop. But the airdrop is gonna come at some point and this could be a qualifying criteria to actually use the bridge. So in my mind, it is plus EV to just get involved here and utilize some of these features. This one as well, if you go to settings, by default also gives you gas on the destination chain. So I think that's a UI improvement from both Stargate and Synapse and something that multi-chain does not do for you, but I think that is a really cool feature. So next, let's have a little look at what happens if we transfer dollars from Arbitrum over to AVAX, another popular destination chain. So essentially what we're doing here is just seeing a quick comparison of what gets you the most bang for your buck. You could read through the documents as to what the general fees are for each of these bridges, but if you just plug in some numbers, you can see it pretty easily for yourself. So as you can see over on AVAX, we'll get $998.88, and we'll also get 42 cents worth of AVAX itself on that chain when we bridge over to ensure we can do some transactions. That seems like pretty good stuff. Then on multi-chain, we can transfer $1,000 into AVAX and actually receive 999.8. So this is the lowest and minimum fee that they actually charge on multi-chain, just that 19 to 20 cent transaction. So you're almost getting all of your funds straight over there. So pretty much $1 better than the Synapse Bridge. However, you won't get gas, but that may not be an issue if you're already using AVAX. And then I'll Stargate USDT to AVAX USDT, a thousand bucks gets you 998.57. So as we can see from that comparison, the best would be multi-chain. Then another favorite could be to bridge from Arbitrum over to the Binance BNB chain. So I've plugged that one in yet again, but a thousand bucks here over to BNB via Synapse Bridge gets you $998.33. And of course, a buck's worth of BNB there. So you can pretty much factor that in as 999.33 in total value. Multi-chain gets you again the lowest fees, $999.80, just 20 cents in transaction cost. Of course, with all these, you will pay some native gas on Arbitrum to make the transfers. And then of course we have this, Stargate, last but not least, a thousand bucks gets you $997.80 on the BNB network with a bit of gas on the destination chain. A quick mention here for Cointracking.info, one of the best tax reporting programs that is on the interwebs. So this is the one I've been using over this past year to do my tax reporting. It gives you the most granularity, most detail, most breakdown for your tax reportings. Very good if you've got a lot of transactions. And what's more with this one, if you want to buy a forever package, i.e. a lifetime subscription to this, it effectively costs you around three years worth of subscriptions. You pay that once and then you've got this forever. So for example, previously I've used Coinly for a few years and this cost me upwards of 400 bucks. So really I should have just come here in the first place, bought out the lifetime package and I would never have to have thought about it ever again. Now I've done a full review video of this one on my channel. I'll leave this just above right about now and at the end of this video and also in the description for you to check it out and see what you make of it. If you're in the US, it's tax season coming up very soon. So do give this a try. So just to round things up here, we've just looked at three different bridges, all with pretty good looking UIs, quite a lot of liquidity as well, but a few little discrepancies between them, depending on what destination chain you wanna send your Arbitrum airdrop value to. I would suggest always shopping round, maybe selecting your favorite three as an example, and then plugging in the details before making a swap. As we saw from this, there could be a swing of up to 10 bucks on a $1,000 transfer. That is 1%. You don't wanna be giving that up on a regular basis. So do shop around and check out all these bridging protocols in your own time to see which one you're most comfortable with. All three of these I would suggest are high quality. And as I mentioned, you may wanna use the Stargate one for a potential airdrop. 
But that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.